fish are the most species-rich group of vertebrates on Earth, and they exhibit an astonishing variability in size, shape, and color. This diversity reflects their long history of evolution, some 400 million years, making them the oldest of all vertebrates. Around 50% of all known fish species live in lakes and rivers, and they can be divided into three classes, jawless fish, such as lampreys, cartilaginous fish, such as the freshwater stingray, and fish with a bony skeleton, the vast majority of species. In bony fish, the swim bladder counterbalances the high density of the skeleton, which is often needed to support the powerful muscles required for swimming. As indicated by their anatomical diversity, fish have a remarkable variety of feeding mechanisms. The hugely diverse fish communities of the Amazonian basin include species such as the tambaki that swim into the flooded forests to eat fruit and nuts, carnivores such as the giant catfish babao, and earth eaters that sift the bottom substrate for edible particles. Omnivores, which take food from two or more trophic levels, tend to be more prevalent among fish species at lower latitudes, while piscivores, that primarily feed on other fish as adults, are more prevalent species at higher latitudes. Substantial changes in fish fauna occur with increasing productivity. As algal biomass increases and water clarity declines, there is an associated increase in planktivorous fish, notably saprinids, and a decrease in carnivorous fish, particularly salmonids. Many fish species feed on zooplankton, and all such species, for example, Aly filosa, have closely spaced gill rakers that act as a plankton sieve. However, planktivorous fish are largely visual predators and mostly select their prey on an individual basis. Their size selection of zooplankton varies according to prey density. When prey are abundant, the fish consume only larger zooplankton, but as prey density decreases, smaller prey are taken. Prey selection by fish can lead to fewer large zooplankton, which in turn leads to reduced grazing of the phytoplankton. Here in Crystal Lake, Connecticut, introduction of the planktivorous fish Alosa led to the loss of large copepods and of large cladocera, such as Daphnia. This caused a shift in the zooplankton community structure to small-bodied taxa. The term trophic cascades is often applied to pelagic systems where predation by fish and or invertebrates alters the zooplankton community structure and their effectiveness in grazing on phytoplankton. An additional set of food web concepts is that of top-down versus bottom-up controls. Top-down refers to predation by fish or invertebrates that affect zooplankton communities, which in turn affects the phytoplankton, while Bottom-up refers to resource regulation of phytoplankton, which in turn affects zooplankton productivity and higher trophic levels. Dr. Eric Jeppesen is a research professor at Aarhus University, Denmark, and a specialist in aquatic food web ecology. Here he describes one of his studies on high arctic lakes that illustrates top-down effects on trophic structure. In this study, we quantified the food web components of 87 lakes in western and eastern Greenland. We found that the pelagic zooplankton biomass was three to four fold higher in the fishless lakes and was dominated by large body taxes such as Daphnia. The large crustacean Bankinex and Lepidus were also abundant in some of the lakes without fish where small-bodied crustacean dominated in lakes with fish. Fish also had a strong impact on the benthic macroinvertebrate communities. The abundance of macroinvertebrates were threefold higher in the near shore areas of fishless lakes. This trend was particularly evident for large-bodied invertebrates. The study also showed that some smaller species, such as small coronamids, had the opposite trend. These were substantially higher in the presence of fish, perhaps due to less competition from the larger, more predation-vulnerable species. 
top-down control by fish is especially apparent in cold, polar and alpine waters. Resonance includes such waters are highly transparent, making foraging easier for visually hunting fish. The prey is exposed to predation for longer periods of time due to longer generation times. And zooplankton may be pigmented to protect against UV and other oxidative stresses, making them more visible to fish. Fish affect the food chain length in lake and river ecosystems, that is, the number of trophic transfers from the base to the top of the food web. This may strongly influence both aquatic community structure and ecosystem function. Food chain length varies among environments. In a study of 10 species-rich aquatic food webs of a large river basin in South America, there was a potential effect of temperature, a surrogate of productivity. Food chain length was shortest upstream with the highest slope, intermediate and low gradient rivers and in rivers below reservoirs, and longest in the reservoirs. These changes reflect differences in the basal carbon and energy sources supporting the food webs along this physical gradient. As in marine systems, intensive fish harvesting can lead to changes in fish communities with effects on the ecosystem. The high value of recreational fisheries is well recognized in many parts of the world, and the total fish harvest from these activities is considerable. Unmanaged recreational fishing can have negative consequences, and these activities require attention to policies and regulations to conserve fish stocks and habitats. Stocking fishes into fishless lakes results in a series of effects that cascade through the food web. These may not only affect prey, but also other predators. For example, trout stocking in lakes of the Sierra Nevada has led to not only a decline in amphibians, but also in garter snakes that depend upon them as a key food resource. Fish stocking is also used as a management tool to control phytoplankton populations. This biomanipulation may be by stocking piscivores that consume planktivorous fish thereby favoring increases in the grazing zooplankton populations. Another approach is to stock filter-feeding fish, such as carp and tilapia. Dr. Zhigang Mao is a research scientist at the Nanjing Institute of Geography and Limnology in the Chinese Academy of Sciences. He has a special interest in fish and aquatic food webs. And here describes the effects of massive stocking of silver carp and bighead carp in Lake Taihu, China. Although these fish consume algae, they also eat zooplankton and disturb the sediments, causing nutrient release that in turn may stimulate algal production. Lake Taihu is one of the largest lakes in China, and it is a drinking water supply for 70 million people. Considerable effect has been put into controlling the external loading of nutrients into the lake. Fish stocking as an additional way to control the phytoplankton took place in 2008. Unfortunately, the resultant increase in the fish stock has a substantial and desired effect on the lake ecosystem. The plankton biomass significantly declined and there was also a decrease in Clodacerin body size. Total algal biomass as well as the populations of noxious cyanobacteria increased over this period, despite the decreases in external nutrient loading. Therefore, our study indicated that uh, phytoplanktivorous fish stocking is not a suitable biomanipulation approach for large lakes like Lake Taihu. Perhaps commercial fishing targeting at uh, Zooplanktivorous and banksivorous fish is needed. The loss of connectivity in rivers caused by dams has led to declines in fish populations in many parts of the world. Dams prevent the migration of many endemic fish species to feeding or breeding grounds and may affect the functioning of these grounds by changing water depths, flows, and deposition patterns. These effects can be partially mitigated by nature-like fishways the success of these is variable 
and depends on sighting and fish behavior. Dams transform river environments to lake environments. The shift often favors generalist fish species over specialists that are adapted to fast flowing water. The release of subsurface water from a stratified reservoir behind the dam can also affect the temperature, oxygen, and water quality of downstream fish habitats. Ongoing climate change is likely to have wide-ranging impacts on fish communities, thereby affecting ecosystem structure and functioning. Some species, such as the common carp, have broad thermal tolerances and may be able to cope with the new thermal regimes resulting in a global widening of their habitats. But other species are more sensitive to warming. Time series of fish data from a set of European lakes indicate that changes have already begun. These data show that the cold-dwelling species Arctic char is especially vulnerable to warmer temperatures. This is of special concern in the North Polar region, where Arctic char are culturally important and a nutritious food source for indigenous communities. Climate change acts on aquatic ecosystems in concert with other anthropogenic stresses, and together these may have complex, compounded effects on freshwater ecosystems and their fishes. Mm -hmm.